Man, you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life. And we're back. So a lot of comments yesterday of people saying I look like I had black eyes. These eyes? I'm black on these eyes. Ain't nobody hit me. I guess it's just the way the shadow cast. I have high cheekbones, so uh, these eyes right here? Nah, I ain't been to fight with nobody. So it made me get to thinking of all the guys I've seen walk around in prison and in jail throughout years with black eyes. So today I'm going to give you some stories on getting punched in the face. Things that led these guys to getting punched in the face. Some of the guys that... Pause. Red Bull. The reactions of some of the men that got punched in the face. Some of the guys that handled their business. And some of the guys that... Boop! Damn, he just punched me in my face. Just took it. Walked off. So that's what we're on now. That's what we're doing today. Punched in the face and during lockup. What causes this to happen? The reactions you're going to see. The reactions you might give. The reactions you might not give. I've seen uh, many, many men walk around with their whole eye just swole up like Popeye. You know what I mean? Looking like the one-eyed bandit. Looking like a pirate. So they won't get in the punch in the face while I locked up. <laughs> it happens daily. Y'all know I done seen it. You know I done lived it. So let's relive it. One thing for sure, two things for certain. You're going to see people fight. You cannot take the worst that society has to offer, put them all in one place, and think that bad things aren't going to happen. Not all people that are locked up are bad people, but there are bad people locked up. Then there are guys that just have tempers. There are guys that are naturally, vi naturally violent. And then there are guys that are just not with that dumb shit that you push their buttons and they'll punch you in their face and your face, even though they're not the type to usually go around punching people in the face. Maybe three years ago, I'm on a job doing some carpentry work. I'm outside replacing some saw fitting some fascia boards on this house and a paint crew pulls up to the house next to it. All the guys pile out. They start setting their ladders up, start prepping. And I'm looking at this old black man standing there, skinny dude, man, at maybe 5'10". He was an amazing, a whopping, astounding, probably 145, 150. Skinny dude. I'm looking at him, and I can't place him. You ever had one of those moments where you look at somebody, and you're like, damn, I know him. Where do I know him from? I'm looking at him and I'm looking at him and I'm not trying to be weird about it, but I, I keep glancing over dude and I'm like, damn, I can't place him. So he comes around the side, gets up there on the ladder with his guys and I see him looking at me and he goes, Jay? I said, yeah, I'm Jay, man, what's up? He was like, it's me, Mr. Green. What's up, Mr. Green? Mr. Green was at Greensville with me. I lived down in Nine Building. I had seen him in Wild Man get into it one time behind a floor buffer. And he would always bug us when we would come in his pod or his building. Hey, the buffer's messed up. I need you to fix it or doing this or that. He was a bugaboo. With me being a maintenance man, he always bugged me to fix things. Look, that black guy's back. It's black again. So um, I'm talking to him like, damn, man, I didn't think you even had a release date. He's like, yeah, I wasn't doing a lot of time. I didn't have it like four years. He moved like a lifer. Like you would think this man had a life sentence. Nah, nah, nah. I ain't had no life sentence, Jay. I ain't, you know, four years, man. Got in, did my time, got out. Got my little painting company going. Got my employees doing the same thing I'm doing, except I'm not a painter. I do, we do it all. But he's got a, a painting company. He's doing good for himself. Got out here and turned his life around, right? So we stand there and we're chopping it up for a couple of minutes. And you know, certain things about people are moments in time that when it comes to certain people, that's what you think about. And I thought back to the story I'm about to tell you now. Mr. Green and most of the guys that buffed the floors had to be off a little bit in the head to buff those floors. One, because you're disturbing all the other inmates. They buff the floors while you sleep. They start by coming out there with a mop bucket full of wax. And they wax the entire floor with these mops. And they put the fans on them to make them dry. Then they'll put another layer of wax on it. Put the fans on it to make it dry. So while you're sleeping, all you smell is wax. 
and these loud ass industrial fans out there in the day room in the pod area blowing once the floors are dry they come back with these floor buffers and it's usually one guy he'll be out there from the time we lock down until breakfast time you got guys telling him hey man turn that damn buff off we're trying to sleep stop bumping my door with the buffer you keep waking me up i told you when i got into an angry man because he ran the buffer by my door and blew that stuff all over my feet right so for you to have everybody arguing with you and choose to do that job you got to be a little either crazy in the head or ready to go mr green wasn't crazy wasn't the fighting type but he done time before i don't think that four years was his first bid he's one of those dudes he was gonna do his time you wasn't gonna predict how he was gonna do his time and he was gonna do what he wanted while he was in there if he wanted that to be his job that's what he was gonna do they kept having issues with their buffers breaking down and the reason they're breaking down is because you're running this bitch non-stop like you cannot run the buffer all night Every night, seven days a week, it's not designed for that. It's meant for, you know, use it when you need to, but you've put too many miles on it. We're constantly replacing these little brushes inside these buffers, right? Jay, when y'all gonna fix the buffer? Jay, look, man, I know y'all got one at the, at the maintenance shop. Just take this one, would you? Bring me another one. I said, we can't do that, man. You know, the buffer's got the numbers right on the front of them. You can't do that. All right, all right, man, all right. Well, he's done got into a wild man one time before behind his damn floor buffer right i see green on the rec yard one day and he's out there he's old man likes to jog talk to the other old guys that are out there and mr green's eye looks like a horse kicked him looks like he was changing some some shoes on a donkey and it just got mad and kicked his ass in the face Looked like like he was a real life character out of mike tyson's punch out mr green's eye is just swollen to where it's like three times bigger than it should be and all this is it looks like his eyeballs ready to come out just a mass walk by mr green and you know you don't want to say nothing to nobody when you see something like that because it's obvious somebody punched him in his shit and it's probably not something he wants to stand here and conversate about i walk by him and i glance over and i see him and the first thing that comes to mind is i'd be wearing some damn glasses i'd be on his wreck yard like like this like a beat wife like and the way I'm walking around with my eye beat up like that. I've had my eyes black before, and I will quickly throw the glasses on. You ain't about to make me look crazy, right? Get to talking to another dude that's in his building. He's like, man, Green tried that dumb shit again. I said, what'd he do? He said he tried to go to another building to try to take that buffer so he could buff these floors. Ah, I just told y'all, those dudes are crazy when it comes to buffing them floors. If you go into a building you're not supposed to be into... First of all, they're supposed to lock you up. Some of these guys get away with this stuff. Mr. Green was one of them because everybody knew the guards know he buffs the floor all day. Tells the guard, hey, let me in. I need to grab the, the buffer out of the closet. The unit manager said it's okay. We'll take it down to nine, Bill, and use it. We'll bring it back tomorrow. They go in there. Guard unlocks the closet door. Mr. Green's got the buffer and is going to pull the buffer out. And another guy that lives in there that buffs the floors all day, every day, comes up and grabs a side of the buffer. Where you going with the buffer? We need it down nine building, man. Our buffer's broke. Now you ain't taking my buffer. I'm taking this buffer, man. The guard just opened the door and let me get it. It's okay. Nah, the guard don't know you ain't supposed to be taking my buffer. You tricked the guard. You can't trick me. These two old guys arguing. I'm not taking my buffer. Dude said they continued to argue for a minute. And Mr. Green said, look, I ain't going to stand here all day and argue with you. And dude just punch Mr. Green in this shit. Mr. Green's eye instantly whoop, swells up. He lets go of the buffer. Dude pushes the buffer back in the closet and told him, now get your country ass up out of here. Don't come over here trying to take shit. You think shit's sweet. You come over here and take something from me. I said, Mr. Green ain't fight back or nothing. He was like, nope. He like, Mr. Green was getting real loud with dude. Pacing up on him, poking his chest out, getting in his face. You know, raising his voice. He was like, in the old head just hit him one good time. Boop. He said, before Mr. Green, within the next 45 seconds, of him walking from that mop closet back to the entry door and leaving back out the pod, his eye had already started to swole shut. He said he was walking away like this, and you could see his eyes going, mm -hmm. Yeah, leave people alone. If somebody tells you, first of all, here's the way it went wrong. None of that stuff belongs to you. This is prison. That's number one. Number two, you know that the guys that do the same thing you do, which is 
off those floors are very, very, very possessive over those buffers, like an abusive husband. Don't nobody, nobody touch that wife. Don't look at my wife. Don't even look at the buffer. Don't say buffer. Don't think buffer. Don't have no plans of buffing. And if you do, don't let it have nothing to do with this buffer. So he should have known better than think he could go over there and do what just going to let him take it. Number three, he was dead wrong. How you going to stand there and argue with him when you done tricked the guards into thinking you're supposed to be over here? Nobody gave you permission to be over here. You were legitly over here trying to steal. You're never going to bring it back. You're going to let the fact that y'all's buffer is broken become their problem now that they don't have one. And a result to Mr. Green to get punched all in his face and getting his eyes swole shut. I didn't mention to him that day on the job site when I talked to him. And he would work on this house, him and his guys, for about five, six days into the next week. And I would see him every day. We'd be out there at lunchtime. My guys would be taking lunch. His guys would be taking lunch. And they'd be sitting on buckets. And we'd be standing there talking. And, man, you ain't never talked to such, such. Hey, remember that one time when, uh, what's his name, got stabbed and they got into it? I swear to God, the whole time I wanted to be like, remember that one time you got your eyes swole shut and you ain't do shit about it because you try to steal that penitentiary buffer? <laughs> Jail can be worse than prison sometimes. Facts. Jail is a much higher stressed environment. From dealing with your girl cheating on you to you calling the house and somebody else answering the phone and being around your kids. Not knowing what's going on with your case. Might be withdrawn from drugs. Withdrawn from alcohol. Don't like the people you're around. Unsure of your future. Scared. There's a lot of things that make jail just a big boiling pot. By the time you've reached the penitentiary, a lot of the things I just talked about are no longer part of your equation. That girl that you were calling that stopped answering the phone or that dude answered the phone one day and said, yo, homeboy, this is Jody. Don't call here no more. It's my girl now. You don't worry about her no more because you've called 27 million times. She no longer picks up and you know that she has moved on. The old Richmond City Jail, and I call it the old jail because they've made a new jail. But the old jail was treacherous. Shout out to all my 804 dudes, all my Southside dudes, my Richmond dudes. Salute to y'all. Y'all already know if you was down the old city jail, how it went down. The old city jail was not somewhere you wanted to get to beefing unless you could take care of yourself. Them guards, they're not coming around, but every so often, and then dudes just act like nothing's going on and your beating continues we got called we got what's called the bullpen when you first come in you go into a little area that's got this these bars on the front you get fingerprinted mug shot they do all that take down your current information let you know your charges you can go in front of a magistrate see if you're eligible for bail from there you go into the bullpen Everybody that just got locked up is in the bullpen. It goes down in the bullpen seven days a week. Why do you think they call it the bullpen? It's like a bunch of bulls locked in a pen and you're going to have chaos. I've seen dudes come in in groups. Whole packs of dudes, whole carload of guys get locked up. Him and all his homeboys, now they're in the bullpen. They've become dominant. Now they can run things in here. The guy that was tough now five, six guys that just got pulled off a corner or got snatched out of a car just came in together. The whole environment can change in a matter of minutes. I seen a guy, and I told you all this in another story. This is a New York cat. Much love to all my New York cats. No disrespect to what I'm about to say. This is not reflect on New York or take anything from New York. Much love to New York. We had a New York dude come in that got locked up on his way back to New York, got pulled in Richmond ends up in the old city jail this guy would rumble he would fight but the problem is look looks like i got a black eye again see that there it goes i also have a scar here so i don't know if that helps this dude would fight right drop of a dime he would fight but he learned real quick that here in richmond if you're an out-of-towner i think this goes for most states and you get into it with somebody he's got his homeboys there there is no winning there is no fair fight, especially with Richmond cats. You jump on one of us, all the rest are going to come and stomp you out. Dudes to try dude over commissary. 
They try him over the phone. Try him over his food. Buck on him when they play poker. And he's quick to fight. After he continues to get jumped, he knows now he's just kind of got to accept it because every time he gets into it with these dudes, it ends up being five, six dudes kicking him and he's he can't win. He's all knotted up, right? He's on the phone one day and he's crying to his mom. Mama, you got to get the bail money up. I don't care. Grandma, tell her I said sell the house. Put the house on the market. Mama, no, I'm telling you, this ain't like Rikers. Mama, you got to get me out of here. These dudes is crazy. Man, they tying dudes to the bars and putting mop heads on them, beating them with flip-flops. Man, they, they waterboarded a dude the other day. They had a dude dunking him upside down in the trash can full of water, trying to drown him for stealing a honey bun. Mama, please get me out here. 100% facts. Everything I just told you happened. They literally took a dude that bucked on a honey bun that he owed somebody, filled the trash can, took the trash can in the shower, these big gray trash cans, filled it all the way up with water and was dunking him in it over and over until it almost would drown him and then let him back out. That's once you've hit population. Let's get back into the bullpen. The bullpen is the one place that if you've still got things on you that the cops didn't discover, that the guards haven't discovered, you're gonna wanna get it to somebody while you're in the bullpen that can get it back to one of the buildings or you're gonna to wanna to try to make it disappear if you're willing to take that route with it. Or you're gonna use what's left of it right there. If you got drugs on you, you got an eight ball of cocaine, you better get the you know, tooting and booting, you better do what you're gonna do. Cause when you get come up out of here, they're gonna shower you, they're gonna search you, like they're gonna find it unless it's uh, you know, in your man purse, in your prison wallet, up Hershey Highway. We get an old white dude that comes in, and the dudes that are in there at the current moment, these young Churchill dudes, are bullying dudes, man. We've been in here the whole weekend, and you got your Richmond Cats, and you got Churchill, and you got Northside, just different parts of, you know, where we're from. And they're bullying dudes, running down on dudes. Where you from? Boom, they jump them. It's like three, four dudes jumping all these different one-on-one -on -one dudes, right? We get an old white guy that comes in. He's the made it through the police. Made it past the guards and patted down several times with a pack of Marlboros. The old red and white pack on him. In the bullpen thinking other dudes is in there smoking. Like I said, the guards ain't doing nothing about it. He looks around, sees other dudes, you know. They got packs of Newports stashed on them, smoking Newports and thinks, man, I'll just go to the back. You know what I mean? Fire up on these old Marlboros. That's what he does. Goes in the back, doesn't know anybody. Locked up on a drug charge, on a junkie charge goes in the back and is standing in the corner and not paying attention to nobody pulls this pack of cigarettes and his lighter out sparks up his cigarette starts hitting his cigarette dude walks up on him one of the young Churchill dudes hey let me get a smoke off you man I know you got more you ain't just got that one cigarette because if you did just have that one cigarette it'd be all bent up and broke by the time you got here nah man I can't do nothing man I ain't got but a couple and I'm gonna smoke these before we hit population before I get sent over to, to F or G or wherever I'm going Nah, man, go ahead, let me, you know what I mean? Like, let me get a cigarette. What dude's trying to do is make him pull him out without him having to beat him up and then go in his pockets or search, you know, other areas to figure out where he's got him at. Nah, man, look, I'm trying to tell you. And the dude pulls out the pack of cigarettes and shows him. I ain't got but like four. Boom, 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 boom. They jump on this old white man. Beat him all up. Nod his face all up. Stomp him out in the corner. They got him in the corner. Put boots on him. Kicking him. Cigarette he was smoking, his done got broke. Somebody else done picked it up, pinched it in the middle where it was was broke and it's hitting it. Smoking it while he's getting stomped out. They take the old man's cigarettes. When I say old, he's probably, I no disrespect to my old guys or people that are in their 50s or 60s. But when you got a bunch of 19, 20, 21 year old, 22 year old dudes jumping on you and you're 56, that puts you in the old category because you rumbling with these young bucks. They beat the man up, man. Stomp him all the way out, smash him. What they don't know is this man's working on getting bail. He's already seen the magistrate. He is waiting on somebody to come post his bail. That night goes by the next morning. I look back there where he's sitting. I ain't had no problems. I know a lot of dudes in the bullpen. Like, you jump on me, I got Richmond dudes that are gonna go upside your head. So if me and you get into it, we're gonna fight one-on-one -on -one because I actually got people in here that I mess with. Next morning rolls around, they bring the trays around. Tray call, tray call. They come to the door, open the door. Start feeding trays in, right? Old dude don't go up there and get his tray. And they push in a certain amount. Somebody else sits the tray down, comes back up there and takes his tray. 
He can't even come to the front. His face is so messed up. Like I said, it's not like the guards would have done anything. But dudes told him, you better not get nobody in trouble, man. So he don't even go get his tray. They don't know. He's still waiting on bail. A little bit later that day, I don't, do not remember the dude's name, but they call his name. Call him up to the front. He goes up to the front. He says, what's going on? The guard looks at him like, damn, somebody messed you up. And like, you must have pissed somebody off. I right, what's going on? Grab your stuff, man. All right. He knows grab your stuff means you're going home. The other guys are thinking when they tell him, grab your stuff, that he's being moved to one of the to one of the housing units, right? He's either going to F2 or E2 or G2. He's going somewhere within the jail where he's going to be housed. Grabs his stuff, walks up to the front, is waiting for the officer to come back, holding stuff underneath his arm. The dude's a junkie, man, standing right there by the door, just kicking it. Talking amongst themselves, right? They feel good they didn't beat this old guy up, took his cigarettes, took his lighter, and the lighter is worth money, right? Guard comes back, pops the door, step out, put your blankets and stuff right there on the ground, proceed down the hallway. No sooner than they pop that door, the dude reached out, sat his stuff down, stepped back inside the door, and punched the one dude that approached him and took the cigarettes from him. <laughs> Guard jumps up, pushes the dude that just got punched in the face back, and shuts the door back. Old hair rolled out, went home on bail. In the next few hours, dudes were so hyped, man. They caused trouble with other people, got to fighting with other people because of dude getting punched in the face. Now they're just looking for trouble. I watched dude's eye Scroop. swell all the way shut. Everybody starts joking. His homeboy is joking. Man, somebody gonna end up going upside your head like that old dude did. Old dude got his revenge, man. Rock dudes, swole this shit shut. We sat in there for the next few days, and I remember looking at dude's eye. And you ever seen somebody get caught off guard with a punch? I'm not talking about just punching the eye. I'm talking about have no clue that it's coming. Like go from having a good day to a bad day really quick. You ever seen somebody just cock that bitch back like they're throwing a, a baseball in the World Series and just launch? The old dude rocked him, knocked him. Swole his whole entire eye up Had him looking like a donut Dude walked around there with his eye all Swole shut Them cigarettes been smoked The only thing you got to show for it is a lighter I know the old dude probably went home And told people Man you should see the other guy You hear that a lot right Told him the story how he got jumped for the cigarettes How he took his lighter Took his last little four cigarettes Smoked the broken cigarette And how he stretched And when I'm telling you He hit dude I didn't have nothing to do with it but it was like a moment of like, I was proud for him to see what he was able to do to the dude that, that you know, was the ringleader of him getting jumped. That was up there waiting to see who was going to come through the door next so they could mess with him, right? You never know, man. You think you're being slick jumping somebody only in turn to damn near get your whole block knocked off and have to walk around now inside the jail. So when we get over to the, the regular pods now, he's got to walk in there. You and your homeboys, y'all gonna all get split up. Y'all in the bullpen together. But once they start sending you off to different places, to different housing units, y'all getting split up. The chances of y'all all going to the same place is zero. You're lucky if you end up with one of those dudes you got locked up with. So now you gotta walk into this whole new environment with a whole nother set of dudes that run stuff. Possibly get your ass kicked and jumped by the dudes in there that do the same things that you and your homeboys did. The only difference is you already walking in with your eye black. Your eyes already swole up. It already looks like you're the victim and something to eat. And he got everything he deserved. I don't like a bully and I don't like dudes that feel like because they have the numbers, that's how they're going to I love to sit here and tell y'all, I ain't never had a black eye. I love to say, ain't nobody ever swole my shit shut. That would be a complete lie. I've had both my eyes swole shut. I got a jump one time. And laid on my mom's couch afterwards for close to two weeks, waiting to see daylight again. Two weeks, just waiting for the crease of my eyes to crack open enough that I could see out of. It's a terrible, terrible thing when somebody swells your shit shut. It's a terrible, terrible thing to get punched in your eye like that. Some people deserve it, some people don't. I didn't deserve getting jumped that night and getting my eyes swole black. Swole shut. I've talked about it in other stories. Go back through and find it. But it's going to happen. 
I'd rather have my eye black than get punched in my nose. I think everybody will agree. If you've ever had your nose broke, we've been punched in your nose, swell my eyes shut all day. Don't punch me. Please don't punch me in my nose. Nobody wants to get hit in the nose. It's just a terrible, terrible ordeal. You're going to get to fighting in the real world. Not everybody, but a lot of guys, especially if you live that life, you're out here, you're doing things you shouldn't do, you run with a shady crowd. some point or another, somebody's going to punch you in your eye. But the chances of getting punched in the eye in jail or in prison are very high. There's too much that goes on behind those walls. Live it through me. If you don't like me, go to another channel, listen to other stories. Just stay away from it. It's not the life you want. It's not the life I want for any of you. Anyways, these jails, the tits centers, institutions, these prisons, all just crazy worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. See, I got my energy back there. Tooth ain't hurting today. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones. And the awesome real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. Man, y'all know how we do. Salute. Pong!